He's going to fumble the football. Mark Sanchez not expecting it. And it was the backside of Brandon Moore that knocked the ball out. Happy Thanksgiving, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to a new episode of Time to Football. I'm your host, Hassan Khan, and in this video, we're going to get in the spirit of Thanksgiving. One thing that I'm really grateful for in this Thanksgiving season is that we finally reached 10,000 subscribers on this YouTube channel, and that wouldn't be possible if it weren't for you and the Time to Football faithful, and I'm very, very grateful for each and every one of you. Thank you. In this video, we're going to talk about one thing that each NFL team is thankful for this Thanksgiving. But before we get into all that, we have to tell you guys about Overlay DFS. This is daily fantasy football where every matchup is in a start or sit format. Two players are matched up and you just guess which player is gonna have more fantasy points for that week. Some of the Thanksgiving Day matchups include Dak Prescott versus Josh Allen, Tariq Cohen versus Bo Scarborough, Drew Brees versus Matt Ryan, and so many more. If you're perfect in your predictions, you win a grand prize of $25,000. There's even another jackpot of over $2,900. So make sure you guys take advantage of that while you can. Go to www.overlaydfs.com to sign up and start playing or download the app for iOS. Hungriest player of the week, the one that wanted it the most. Speaking of Thanksgiving and people that are hungry, we have to talk about Jarvis Landry, Cleveland Browns wide receiver that had 10 receptions, over 140 yards, and two touchdowns on top of that in his victory against the Miami Dolphins. But what makes him the hungriest player that wanted it the most is that he had that game bookmarked for the last two years, knowing that it's a revenge game against his former team. And that's why he is the hungriest player of the week. Now we're gonna tell you one thing that each NFL team is thankful for. We're gonna name all 32 teams going down in alphabetical order. Starting with the Arizona Cardinals. They're thankful for a head coach that was willing to screw another man's career. Turned out that Kyler Murray was the best decision and not Josh Rosen. The Atlanta Falcons. They're thankful for the best two weeks of the season. As a Falcons fan, this, this hits home. I felt this. The Baltimore Ravens, they're thankful for everyone thinking that Lamar Jackson couldn't throw. That's a very good running back if you ask me. The Buffalo Bills, they're thankful for Pat Shermer, the Giants head coach, saying that Josh Allen has a chance to be a starter someday in the NFL. The Carolina Panthers, they're thankful that most teams don't believe that white people can be franchise running backs. I mean, just look at the dude, he's jacked. The Chicago Bears, they're thankful for The Cincinnati Bengals, they're thankful for the Miami Dolphins finally winning a couple games because that increases their chances of getting Chase Young. The Cleveland Browns, they're thankful that people can accuse someone of racism to justify their actions in 2019. It's not a believable story, I'm sorry. The Dallas Cowboys are thankful for giving Americans hope that job security for mediocrity exists. Yep, that dude's never getting fired. The Denver Broncos, they're thankful that people think they have a top five defense when statistically, this year at least, they don't. Talented team Chris Harris, Von Miller, just doesn't show it. The Detroit Lions, they're thankful for the first three games of the season. Remember that? Good times. The Green Bay Packers, they're thankful for a running back who could be our hungriest player of the week for another reason rather than being hungry. Bet you forgot about Eddie Lacy, didn't you? The Houston Texans, they're thankful for the Bears taking Mitch Trubisky as their franchise quarterback. The Indianapolis Colts, they're thankful for Josh McDaniels being that one friend that makes plans with you, but then flakes on you last minute. Telling you, I was meant to be with Frank Reich. The Jacksonville Jaguars, thankful for teams moving on from Super Bowl winning quarterbacks. The Kansas City Chiefs, they're thankful for the team doctor that saved Patrick Mahomes' knee. Seriously, when he popped it back into place, if it was just an inch off, it would have ended his season. The LA Chargers, they're thankful that this season might be the last season that they're playing in Carson, California. Maybe they'll finally have a loyal fan base when they move into a new stadium next year. On the other hand, the LA Rams, thankful that they have a fan base in Los Angeles. The Miami Dolphins, thankful for loyal fans like Felipe Carvalho. 
We asked Felipe if he wanted to be interviewed on this show. He said yes, and for two weeks he was all in until last minute he stopped replying to our messages. He pulled at Josh McDaniels. Felipe, respond to us. The Minnesota Vikings, thankful for a workplace where employees can voice their frustrations. Turned out to be a good thing for Kirk Cousins. The New England Patriots, thankful that they're one of the best teams in the NFL. And whenever Brady does something as simple as a check down pass, Patriots fans never fail to remind us how incredible that is because he's 42 years old. Greatest quarterback of all time, no question. But come on, guys. The New Orleans Saints, thankful for finally having the ability to challenge pass interference calls, which apparently doesn't matter in football. Seriously, the success rate is like 7%. The New York Giants, thankful that the fans get to see Eli Manning's face on another body for at least another 10 to 15 years. The New York Jets, thankful that Adam Gase will be back next season. Wait, the Oakland Raiders, thankful for Antonio Brown's meltdown because honestly, they didn't need him. Just telling it how it is. The Philadelphia Eagles, thankful that the Cowboys keep failing to meet expectations so that the Eagles have a chance at the division. The Pittsburgh Steelers, thankful for Mason Rudolph getting benched so that there hopefully won't be any altercations this Sunday. The San Francisco 49ers, thankful that the Cardinals hired a head coach that screwed a man's career so that they could draft Nick Bosa. The Seattle Seahawks, thankful for Bubble Yum. That dude probably has a jaw of steel. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers, Thankful for players that are really good, but also really bad at the same time. I didn't think it was possible until I saw it for myself. The Tennessee Titans. Thankful for the Dolphins solving their quarterback situation by trading Ryan Tannehill. Because right now it's obviously showing that he was the problem. And finally, the Washington Redskins. Thankful for having a bad season so that the media can talk about something else rather than their team name. Sorry, offended culture in 2019. It's not getting changed anytime soon. And that was one thing that all 32 teams are thankful for this Thanksgiving. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Be sure to like this video and leave a comment down below with one thing that you guys are thankful for. Whether it's one thing your team is thankful for or you as a fan are thankful for when talking about your team. Also, be sure to subscribe to this channel so you can stay up to date when we come out with a new episode every single week. Also, hit me up on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. The username for all three is at Time to Football. Thank you guys so much for watching this video and enjoy your Thanksgiving.